Everybody's facing the climate shocks in one way or another. Earlier on this year, for example, around May, there were floods that affected the northern part of Rwanda, and um, that, of course, you know, led to loss of lives. But uh, on top of that, it also led to like loss of infrastructure. So roads, for example, were grossly impacted. You know, um, huge investments washed away overnight, just like that. In the context of Pakistan, first, you know. Uh, there is climate change. I think that question is now resolved and settled. In Pakistan, we have faced it uh, in the face of floods, in the face of uh, varying temperatures, in the, in, in the face of uh, rainfall patterns being really changed. Recently, in 2023, we had a Fred cyclone that affected the Zambez province. It was also huge, and uh, the reconstruction takes too much long because of the uh, financial availability to deal with the negative effects that those shocks uh, brings when they occur. You know, Jordan is uh, suffering from a shortage of water and there is a lot of air pollution. The bulk of the funding, the bulk of the, the interventions are mostly on mitigation. But on mitigation, we are not big, you know, in meters. So mitigation is something that has been more focused on, but it is adaptation that we need to focus on to save lives, to save livelihoods, you know, all of that. Of course, needless to say, there is massive investment need, uh, fin financing needs. So, um, but we need to kind of push uh, on this agenda to make sure that there is a tailored uh, intervention. Because when I talk about livability and creating job opportunities in cities that cannot happen or those objectives cannot be achieved if we do not look at the climate change and the environment impact uh, which cities have. Uh, cities can both be uh, an opportunity to mitigate and adapt to climate change but if this is not done uh, cities can actually uh, aggravate the problem. Uh, we are at the crossroads as far as urbanization uh, is concerned going into the future. You know, developing countries are disproportionately impacted by climate effects and there's a lot more that could be done in terms of giving these countries the resources to cope with these effects. It's a big elephant in the room. Currently, uh, Africa is expected to contribute about $2.8 trillion to the Paris Agreement um, commitments uh, between now and 2030. At the same time, the wealthier countries are also expected to contribute about 100 billion uh, annually to African countries around uh, climate change. But so far, there's only about 16.7 billion currently uh, going to the to the continent. Then, when you look at uh, how much financing has gone into climate in Rwanda historically, and where local sources of financing are going to come from, there's a huge gap. Uh, we have been sufferers. We have not damaged the environment. Our, our carbon footprint is less than 1%, but we are among the top 10 vulnerable countries. Those who are polluted should pay. I think one huge challenge to highlight is the factor of time. You know, we just don't have the luxury of, of, of time and the electorate is not so patient. No one knows where this money is going to come from, you know. And whilst I think the African countries and the continent is endowed with uh, resources and they might well be able to generate uh, these uh, monies, we are sort of like in a catch-22, you know, because it's from the same resources that we are saying we need to preserve the biodiversity and the ecosystems, you know, and not disturb them because it impacts climate change. So I think we need a bit more data and research and evidence around this work and find what that sweet spot uh, is, you know, where the balance is, you know, how much, you know, industrialization and development can we have that doesn't necessarily hurt um, the, the biodiversity that we so need to, to protect. You know, data is very important for decision maker and especially for policy maker to take um, a decision in the benefit of the citizen or benefit of their employee or for the organization. 
So uh, GAM has developed it by its own strategy 2226 to be a man a smart city. And I believe this is the first step in the right track to depend on accurate and valid data for decision maker. So uh, while the climate challenge uh, is becoming more and more apparent, uh, I feel that we are also, uh, you know, upping our game, so as to speak. And um, I can only say watch this space in the, in the future. It's going to be very exciting.